Morgan, what animal do I have on today? This is the, the rapid, fast sloth. Yeah. The fastest mammal. Is it a mammal? A sloth's a mammal? Or is it a marsupial? What do they call those things? Marsupials are still mammals, aren't they? A sloth? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think sloths have pouches. I think they do have a pouch, actually. Google if a sloth has a pouch. I think they're babies. They aren't primates or marsupials. Yeah, they're just a mammal. Though the groups do share some similarities. Yeah, they definitely look alike. The fastest, the fastest guys on Earth are these sloths. I don't think so. No, it's the exact opposite. They're the sloths. <laughs> you ever seen a sloth? Yeah. I see a lot of videos that come from Australia. We have sloths here in L.A. At the zoo? No, no. There's a place out in... Um, but they're not wild. No, no. They're in captivity. Yeah. And you go there, and if you blink, they're still there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this isn't funny. <laughs> And that will lead us right in. That's going to lead us in? I thought she was going to clip all of us. No, you got it. Take two. We uh, welcome you all back for another show of Father Knows Something. You just missed the uh, the preempt, which is my warm-up, but uh, it got clipped. It did. <laughs> How do you know it's going to get clipped? Uh, you I, sound so sure, but... We'll see. Yeah, it's not my editing this week. It's on Justin. Ah. So well, you never know. We are excited to be here. It was a very, very fast week, and um, man, Tuesday is going to be here in another couple of days, and we launched this on Tuesday. Tonight is Sunday night, so it goes to show you what kind of work will go into this over the next few days. I'm not going to bore you anymore. That's going to get cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the first time we've had a trio episode on your show. Well, welcome, trio. Here we go. Okay. Let's go. Uh, what were we calling this one? Nagging feelings. Nagging feelings. No, she said nagging feelings. Nagging. Nagging. I thought you said nagging to be... Do you have a lot of wax in your ears? Uh, I just... No. So these stories all involve people that are on the brink of either a big choice, some kind of change, or just something in their life that has them thinking and... A lot of them are just, they're dealing with like these big feelings too that are like really sticking with them no matter like so this, how long it's been. It's nagging feelings. Nagging feelings. Okay. All right. Are we ready? Are yes. we buckled in? Perfect. Uh, we're going to go back to college for this one. We are. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. All right. Hi, Jerry. I'm 22 female. You can call me Laura if you want a name. It's not my real name though. So hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. <laughs> All right. I'm having a bit of a crisis with my future career right now. I've been in school for almost five years and in May I will graduate with my second degree. I'm in school to be a teacher only problem is, I'm not sure that's what I want anymore. When I applied for this program five years ago, I thought it would be a great fit for me. I'm a people person. I love kids and teens, and I'm creative and excited to share my passions with my students. Now that I've had some practical experience, I am realizing that 75 to 80% of the job is planning, prepping, organizing, and marking. All things I have never been good at. This job is going to stress me out to the max. I feel so anxious and nauseous while I was at school every day, and the lifestyle I had to adopt to be prepared every day was not sustainable. It will not make me happy in the long term. I've pretty much decided that once I graduate, I'm going to be a substitute teacher for money, but that still leaves me with the problem of what the heck am I going to do with my life? Anyway, I have two questions for you. One is, how did you know when you found the right career? And how do I explain my decision to people who may not be very receptive of it, like my mom? I have been in different careers. Uh, the first career that I started with, uh, even though I, I, I left that career <clears throat> and migrated into a parallel type of a career, I find that uh, what you do in life all leads into the next thing. And if you're patient, you will see where some of this stuff will, will, will follow you and you will fall into that right 
fit, and you'll never even believe what it is. Once you're, once you're there, you'll know what it is, but you would never imagine when you first started that was where you're going to be. Morgan's a wonderful example. She went to school. She <laughs> decided to go uh, challenge the national debt with her education. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> and uh, came out, and we can we can all legitimately call her Dr. Morgan. However, at the end of the day, she fell into a passion of doing the podcast. She's loving it. She enjoys it. She's finding a way that she can make a living doing it and sustain herself. And it's a passion. She gets up in the morning. She loves to do it. Justin always knew he wanted music. He found a way into it. He found a way, took took some risk and gamble. And next, before you know it, he he gets up in the morning and he produces his you know his music. And it's not going to work. These these two over here love what they do. And right now, I am am in the middle of a new career change. My my career, a business I started fourteen years ago, not ever imagining that I would ever do that. But because of COVID, it devastated it. My customers evaporated when COVID came up. People quit congregating. So I find myself now migrating into something new. The, the answer is it will happen. You will find from all the life experiences from that toolbox of things, it, you'll find yourself into, the ne- in, into that next part of your life that you will have success. Because if you love what you're doing, you will be successful at it. If you don't love what you're doing, it will torture you. It will torment you. It, it, it's, it's not fun. But some of the things that you loved about teaching, you can maybe find a way that you can implement that in a new area of a, of, of a job that's very niche or niche, as they might say, um, that will work for you. So sometimes I say, don't give up your daytime job too quick. Let's see where, where, it, where it filters in, you know, filters you into, but keep your eye open of what, how you can, how you can implement the things that you do like and, and fall into that. that. That's my comment on it. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I hear, you know, I love collaborating and sharing with my students and I hear that and I'm already like, okay, well, what about a college guidance counselor? Like, Or, you know, depending on the age group of kids you like, you know, there's counselors at all schools, high schools need college counselors. And you're collaborating with students, getting to know them, but also helping them achieve their goals. You don't have to lesson plan. You don't have to do the, you know, the annoying work that gives you anxiety. I also look at, um, and there's other types of schools that literally don't believe in giving homework. Like I believe there's Montessori schools for little kids too, where it's very just like, the child designs their learning experience, mm-hmm. not a teacher. So, you know, there might be some other options out there that... Yeah, absolutely. It might be the school. Yeah, it might be the school itself as a bad fit. But I think there's teaching is just such a valuable skill. Like the skills you've probably learned, I'm sure it can translate into just about anything. So I think, yeah, pick out what you like about your job specifically or what you do and try to find ways that you can do that, that's not necessarily teaching. I think, like you said, you'll be surprised where it can take you. But I, I, I've lived it. Yeah. It's always perplexed me why uh, somehow coming out of high school at 18, you're supposed to decide what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And I think that there's a lot of careers that are highly dependent on making that choice early. If you want to be very successful at certain careers, you almost have to jump in freshman year of college Mm -hmm. and be on that because otherwise people are going to be ahead of you. People are going to beat you to it. They're going to do school in three years. They're going to get out, have all the internships. They're going to like, they're going to do it first if you don't do it first in a lot of careers. So I've always found that interesting for me. Yes. Music was always in, in the back of my head, but when I first went to college in that my parents for sure wanted me to get a degree and I don't think I was ready to go try the music thing yet fully. I went to into freshman year not knowing what I wanted to do. And it was just through like going through through the curriculums and all the different classes that I ended up figuring out that I did entrepreneurship, a very creative business degree. 
And what's interesting is so much of that applies still to what I do every day. Mm -hmm. And I still think the college experience, though a major in teaching, yes, a lot of your learning was focused on that career path. There's also classes you took, like a college degree is so applicable to so many things, especially teaching. I mean, just because you study marketing doesn't mean you have to become a marketer. Just because you study philosophy doesn't mean you can't go do something else. There's so many opportunities. And I think in the modern world, there are so many opportunities. There's so many unique jobs that you wouldn't even think of. So it's more just like get excited and search for interesting things. There's so many jobs I'd love to go do. Like there's people that do scuba diving in the ocean and do some crazy shit. There's <laughs> all the scientists and I love science. Like there's, I wish I could live like 20 lifetimes, a hundred lifetimes because there's so many careers I want to try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And I don't see me having an entrepreneurship degree or a teaching degree in any way could hold me back from so many. Yeah, sure. You might not go be a finance person on Wall Street, but there's so many things you can go do, Absolutely. Yeah. even though it must feel horrible to have put in that time and work and money. You know, there used to be some different kind of uh, job fair tests they used to give people for to find out where you excel, and they would give you a list of opportunity, of direction, of type of jobs that you may want to fall into. Now, I don't know how good the... I've never done it. I don't know how, how good they are. Mine how, told me I should be a gardener. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I got there. Why are all our plants dead? Yeah, you do not have a green thumb. <laughs> I, no, not at all. It literally told me I should be a gardener, like a landscaping architect. I don't fucking know. Let me, let me explain. There's a thing called water in a hose. <laughs> You know, sometimes you forget. It's fine. No big deal. It's a lot more complicated. The, the, the good news is if <laughs> get a, look at all the different, you know, try try some different jobs. If, if this is not working for you, try a job in sales. Try a job in, you know, go way off the deep end from left to, from 9 o'clock to, to 3 o'clock and then go from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock and all these different avenues, and you will find some stuff that you will say, I kind of enjoyed that. I like creating. I like doing this. I, I liked inventing. I like seeing my work, you know, come to fruition. That's what life is all about, is trying all these new things. And it's very much what you said. Try diving. Try the, you know, Jacques Cousteau, I think his, his grandson is now looking for a new crew, uh, even though Jacques is a long guy, but we can go diving. We can go down into Who the. Who are you talking about? Jacques Cousteau. Someone's going to have to write in and tell Morgan about Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> uh, I will just say, too, like it's never too late to change careers or, like, f yeah, it sucks to invest a lot of time and money into something, but it is like a blessing in disguise. Like, I'm doing something now that I'm much happier doing. I feel more fulfilled, which is so odd to me, even. It just still blows my mind. But. Uh, it's never too late. Like even thinking about my grad school program, like everyone in my program is doing OT besides like full-time OT besides me. And I went to school, like the youngest was 23, but I started class with someone who, when we started the program was 30. So, you know, there's a 10 year difference between those two people. And like, she graduated a doctorate program at 33, which mm -hmm. some was like, oh, that's late, but it's never too late. Like, you got to be happy. And so if it takes exploring and trying jobs for the next 10 years. And it'll be so worth it. So well, it. you'll have a good time doing it. Yeah. Just, just, have, True. just have a good time and take these experiences and put them all in the hopper. I, it, I call it getting, getting the motor going. You got your motor going. Now go explore some of the other, the other venues that you can try. And it'll be really interesting to, uh, to hear back if you're good enough to touch back. Say, you remember me? I, 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 you know, I messaged you guys, you know, four years ago, and this is what I'm doing today. Yes, That'd be so we cool. need some updates. I would love that. Please but, send updates. By, <laughs> by, by the way, that you know, I am I am on Elon Musk's next tour to the moon. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go you. with you. I think that being said about updates, if we do read your story on this podcast, uh, we should either have like a separate form for updates that we should get going where. The updates aren't going to get lost from yeah. the story submissions because we would love to connect with you guys again after, you know, 
we share our advice or you, yeah. this is your show. We you could share do a your sequel. advice. I, I will honestly say that I've been, I do read the comments that you guys make at, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And some of you I even, you know, I, I certainly respond to because your thought process that goes into it is, is truly appreciated. And it's great to get everyone else's view and, and nice to know what people think. Mm -hmm. And plus everyone else in the forum gets to read it as well. Because like, like we, we, said in the very beginning, this is just an, one, one guy's opinion. And that it doesn't mean that I'm right, but it's always great to hear everyone else's thought processes. And I'm certainly open to hear everyone's process because I learned from you guys as well. Well, our next uh, write-in, fellow Minnesotan, Ooh. has a very sad story, sad topic, which we all have experience with. Okay. okay. And it's it's tough okay um my cat passed away two nights ago my parents have immigrated from different countries therefore we don't have family here in the states i don't have many friends either other than one and my boyfriend my cats are what i hold so close to my heart they've provided such emotional support he was my first cat and he passed away from a blood clot it was painful for him and for us how do I deal with the pain of losing my baby? How do I get over this guilt? Well, I my first thing that comes to my mind is I want to know why she feels guilt. Because she didn't take the, the, the you know the, the, her baby's life. Now, if it, even though we're saying it, it's an animal, it doesn't mean it's not as important as someone some people that have children and it's life. And this life was, was so important and that, that life's soul and spirit was, was, was intertangled with her. So I'm not going to diminish what passed away it's except for the fact that it was a part of her. The fact that you feel guilt, you're not God. You're, 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 you're just not the universe. You, you're a person that got the blessing to share this, this life form it got to have your love, your life form, and unfortunately, we don't all stay synchronized on the same time space while we're here on Earth. I know that I'm going to be gone before my, my children will be gone, at least hopefully. They'll live a long, beautiful life and get to do everything. But I'm glad I got to share this time with them. And when I go, my kids should not feel guilty when I go because they got nothing to do with it. And so I think that's the first thing you have to really do is, is just reflect back that this was a wonderful time that you guys got to share with one another. And as important as, as, as your baby was to you, you were as important to the baby. Your kitty loved you. And it's not that you can just go replace you know, and think that that another animal would be less than what you shared with that animal. But there is another animal out there that needs your love, and you need that animal's love. So it's to to find another life form to to share with is not bad. It will be healthy for you, long as you go at it with the fact that 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 animal needs you, and you also need that animal. The bottom line is is that we are only here to share. And yeah. we are, and it's and it's a gift. And as that kitty was a gift from from the universe to you, it now needs that kitty back to be do blessings in different places. And that, that's one out, outlook that way you can look at it, and hopefully that will help you through it. Yeah. Also, like health happens. You you shouldn't feel guilt because your you know your cat got a a blood clot. I mean, there's so many uncontrollable variables and factors and. Unfortunately, sometimes our animal's health is one of them. Um, I have my childhood pony still, and I just want to cry thinking about it. But he is about 24, 25 years old, and he's got a brain tumor. And so that's not something I ever could have controlled. I couldn't, I couldn't have taken care of him any better than we did. I mean, just shit happens. So I think, like you said, like appreciate that you got to have this little kitty and you know, I'm sure they felt loved. Um, one thing I really hear, though, in your writing is the fact that 
you really don't feel that you have support or friends or a lot of family around you, um, I kind of look at this maybe as the perfect time to go volunteer at a local animal shelter. I think, you know, giving back and being around other animals and, and people and people to c- gives you a chance to connect with people, maybe make some friends, find people that care about animals the way you do. But I think this would be a great time, you know, because you're probably not ready for a new cat yet, but I think just being able to connect with others and animal shelter people who, you know, they also deal with loss of animals. So I think, I think it would be a great place for you to connect and maybe make some friends and find, find people to share with. Yeah. I think losing my childhood dog was probably one of the hardest things. Oh yeah. It was really, it was really sad. But I think when you think about it though, it's, you got to be happy it happened and less sad that it's over because mm-hmm. you can't control that. And I like the saying, I've seen it a few times where it's something like a dog or a cat or some pet animal may be just a part of your lifetime, but to them, you're their, you're their entire lifetime. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally oh. you are it. And so all you can do is be happy that you had that. And if you made that the best life for them, then... Yeah, it's sad that it's over, but there's there's not much you can be sad about regarding that. I mean, that's so cute. And and one more thought, being alone. You know, when my kids were growing up, they will remember Thanksgiving very very um, clearly because we weren't the family that really started our day by having a planning the turkey dinner at our home. A friend of ours started a project in his own restaurant that he would take people that had no family from invite them to his restaurant, never to accept money on that day. And where he started with a couple hundred people that came to that restaurant, that that Thanksgiving day grew to feeding 3,000 people. And everyone from the community would go down. And my kids, Morgan, one of them, would sit with people just so they weren't alone. So I say this is that there are so many places that are in your community, I'm sure, that have seniors that have nobody that would love to play cards, love to talk to somebody. And if you want to talk about something that's rewarding, sit down with these people and just take time for them. And that is the most rewarding thing because the time that they have left, they will appreciate you and you will learn so much about life from these people, it's invaluable. It, it's an experience that it, 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 it is truly fulfilling. Yeah, I think that is probably one of my most memorable life experiences ever. I, I am so appreciative of that opportunity and all those people. It was amazing. So here's cheers to you, our friend Dan Cohn. <laughs> <laughs> A true, true angel soul. He's, he was, he's amazing. Hang in there, though. Sorry about your kitty. Brave the Minnesota winter. Yeah. Okay. So for this next one, Jerry, would you consider yourself a handyman? Uh, yeah, I, I, I know how to use a tool. All right. So I'm pretty I think good with we, it. Uh, I understand being mechanical. Okay. I think you have an interesting take on this one. Okay. Neither my husband nor I have fathers that play active roles in our lives. It impacts us every day in many different ways. I'm writing because my husband isn't the most handy. He never had a father or male figure that taught him certain things. When things need to get done around the house, he puts it off for months. I usually end up either doing it myself or getting my mom to help me when she's in town. My son is about to be one and there are things in the house that still haven't been put up. We have two different baby gates, the kind that swing open but need to be drilled into the wall, Mm -hmm. waiting to be installed. We've had them for months. Instead, we're using a crappy one that's impossible on my back to pop up, the kind you just got to swing a leg over if you need something. My husband is also super busy right now because he's a basketball coach. I'm always watching the baby, so it's not like I can take the time to figure out how to pull it, put these gates up, and I can't go using a drill while the baby is asleep. On top of everything, he's insecure about not being very handy. So if I ask other men, uncles, friends, whatever... He gets really upset. 
even if I'm just calling them for advice, knowledge on whatever it is I'm trying to do, it's super frustrating. I know my husband is insecure, but he's putting me in an impossible situation by procrastinating and then getting angry when I reach out. The only time he doesn't get upset is if I do it myself or if my mom helps me. What can I do to get him to understand that either he needs to let other people help me or he needs to freaking learn how to do it himself? Also, sometimes he knows how to do something and just procrastinates. How do I approach the situation? Well, I, I'm looking at this that you are enabling the beast. Yeah. Uh, I have a son. I have a couple sons. And it's interesting that it when when my kids were young, and I was very mechanical, I had every tool in the world, including a machine shop that could build some massive, massive things. But when I would come to telling my son to come help, he didn't want to know about a tool, my eldest. And all of a sudden, he became a dad. And let me tell you, that guy, he's, he got mechanical. Mm-hmm. And now he, he bought another piece of property. He's going to start building. He's getting mechanical. He, know, he understands the value of it all. So my answer to you is uh, when it comes to you, you, you got to kind of have a good time with him. So I would, you know, bring out a TV and put on the word YouTube, have, a, have the cordless, you know, screwdriver drill with some different attachments that you know that he'll probably need. Sitting, maybe you should watch the YouTube first just for fun while your child is sleeping and get everything ready. And then when he gets home, have the sign saying, here are these parts, here's the thing in YouTube. Because YouTube, as much as we want you watching us, We'll take we'll 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 take a backseat to this. Just say how to put up fence or how to put up childproof fence. It's there. There there are things on YouTube that there's no missing. Whatever you want to do on, on truth, that. and it is the guide. And I, I I built my own jet airplane. I built some of the largest cranes in the world. And all I can tell you is I still go to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you do a lot. True. <laughs> I, for me, I hear this and I look at this whole situation as your child's safety is way more important than his ego. And I think kind of like what you said, it's like you're, you're feeding the beast. Like he, it's almost like he's letting this like, oh, I need to be a man's man. I need to know how to fix stuff. Like that concept of toxic masculinity and like them, him getting, him getting mad at her. Like that is that's just so that in itself is toxic, but you don't have to be able to twist a wrench or screw in a freaking baby gate to be a dude. Like, no, to no, be a man. No. She's just looking, she's looking for her partner to help her to, to, to achieve this goal. And it's not a big deal. And you can do it. Look, I, I had a, I have, I had a woman friend who I'd go to her home and she had her toolbox. She was, she could buy anything and put that thing together. And she was amazing. But do you feel that, because he won't even let other people help her. Like, she, you know, he is busy. He's coaching basketball. But he gets mad when another man helps her. Her mom can help her. So do you feel like there's a way to address this I, 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 ego, this I toxic think insecurity? The, the basic thing is put, put the tools out there. Put, up, put, the, put the TV right there and say YouTube and say, Hi, honey, glad you're home. By the way, <laughs> you're going to do this. Mm-hmm. I need your help. And... There, there, it's, it's not, will you do this, honey, enough screwing around. I need this. I mean, if it's impacting her health, which like it says she hurts her back for the other gate and it's probably unsafe for the child. Like, for months. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry to put up a baby gate with an electric drill takes easily two minutes. Five, five minutes tops. Two yeah. minutes. Done. Where do you live? I will come over. Like, where do you live? We're not no 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 we're not enabling this th- this behavior. You're get get the tools, lay it out, make kind of make it kind of funny and cute, but this is what it's going to be, dude. You're yeah. doing it. You're going to grow. What ways do you address like this insecurity of his though? Like cuz I look at like I, I don't look at it as insecurity. I look at it, this as total laziness. It's not a priority. Is for it him. laziness or is it manipulation? Uh, all of the above. But the mindset is that this guy is just avoiding it. He doesn't want to do it. And the answer is... Then why get gross when people will do it for you? Right. Like, that's what I don't... I think that's what's, like, catching me up about this one is, like, fine, you don't have time to do it, 
But then you're going to flip out at your wife when she does get help from other people. And or, it's it's clearly other men. How about this? You got two options. One, watch YouTube and take care of it. Or two, make the phone call to the handy guy and have a handy guy come do it. Pay someone versus family helping for free, though? Uh, this, is his, this is his decision. Either he's going to go do it or he is going to... You can't... He, they can't keep putting on everybody else to do it. The bottom line, they... This is their house. This is their behind their front door. They got to take care of it. Either he's going to take care of it one way, because she can't do it anymore. She's got her own thing she's taking care of during, during the day. He can do it. I also look at this, too, where the book, there's a book by John Gottman. He's like a famous love and relationship expert. And he says, like, the number one thing he looks for in successful relationships is the ability to accept these bids from our partners. And so a bid would be like, oh, honey, can you put the baby gate up? Yeah, I'll get that. I'll get right on that for you. It's like your partner asking to be recognized or um, asking for help or it doesn't need, it doesn't need to be like doing things either. It could just be like um, you go in for a hug after work mm -hmm. and your partner hugs you back versus, oh, I just walked in the door. Like I'm not ready for that. And so for him, like he's also like, yeah, okay, this is about a baby gate, but he's also putting long-term strain and damage on his relationship by, like, not accepting his partner's bids. Okay. I just, like, I just find this so interesting. Okay, Justin, you can talk. <laughs> it's so interesting to me. I don't know. Well, you have a great way of, of, of breaking it down for, all, for, for a much deeper uh, thought process than yeah, this. Yeah, I love that book. It's a good one. I think we hit it. I mean, I was ready to, <laughs> I'm ready to kind of move on. So I was letting you guys wrap it up. No, no comments on that one? I don't know. I think you and I were fortunate to grow up in ways where we became handy just by how we grew up. Like, yeah, I but had a dad and a grandpa that were basically did all of the house projects when I was super young. Like, my earliest memories are helping my dad build a bathroom in the first house I lived in. And, I had my grandpa, like, then I think about we, my grandpa and I put in a, a door to my first studio to, like, make a little vocal booth. And, like, I participated in all that right, stuff. Right, you're not, you're not. But you're not him. You are not rebellious. No, I know. But I'm just saying, like. The, so I, then on the flip side. It's just, like, we are so quick. Like, if we need to get something done. We do well, it. We built the studio desk. Like, we just get shit done. But now so, imagine the flip side for a guy who doesn't have that. Like, put yourself in his shoes. It just is, I, I see it being more than just being handiwork. It's a. It's more than just putting it off for months because I don't know how to use a drill. It's like. It, it's more it, about the ego and insecurity. Yeah, it's just, I just think it's weird. It is really weird. I just look at this at this guy that he is just, re, re, doesn't want to go near a tool, doesn't want to do, this is just not his gig and doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah. That's fine, but then let other people help your wife. Or go take care of it. Because she's, she's put it all out there. The, everything's there ready for him. Yeah. I mean, it's like a child when you're asking a child to do their homework and you argue with them for 20 minutes to do their homework where it would have been done in five minutes. Right. So, And that's what this is really, this is the behavior that we're witnessing here. He'd rather spend more time arguing about it than just knocking the thing out to let him get his feet wet, see it's not going to kill him. And he might even have a good time. And feel accomplished when he when he finishes it. It's no different than when something's going to encroach on your home. It's going to damage your home. You can wait for everyone else to come finally do it. You know your 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 landlord to come fix it, or you can finally just take take it upon yourself. You get it done, and you're going to have to just deal with the bill and, and fight about it later. But you, it has to be taken care of. The kids can't go fall down the steps. Yeah. What do you What do you think about couples therapy for this one? Oh, I think it would be excellent. I I just. And I don't know a lot of context. This is about a baby gate. And a lot of people are going to be like, couples therapy, Morgan? Like, this is about a baby gate. Like, it's a bigger picture. I think this issue is a lot deeper. And I think I just hear how controlling and this insecurity. And I'm like, this is not a normal behavior from a secure person. And I think some couples therapy in this case would be very beneficial. Okay. 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 This one, that one left me heated. Oh. Guys, this was really a, an interesting show, and I'm so glad that we uh, 
Morgan was here because she always adds a lot of color. <laughs> and <laughs> Too much. I'm so sorry. But we had a great time, and we look forward to seeing you for part two. Bye. Bye. Bye.